So my name is Caroline Blake. I work for the UVM Watershed Alliance program. I'm their Watershed and Lake Education program assistant. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the stream table. I would say prepare yourself for about an hour's worth of setup. Um, there's lots of components and you will need another person in order to transport the heavy equipment. So this is the fully set up stream table, however there are individual pieces that I would recommend doing first. Please lay down a tarp ahead of time that collects any microplastics that might fall off the tables with students. Watch out for the tripping hazard as well. The table includes two legs, both of which are different heights, so make sure that the longer legs are going to be on the upstream section um, and the lower legs are going to be on the downstream section, that way there's a tilt to the table. Inside of this table is also going to be the microplastics. Where you can find these are going to be inside of buckets, um, which then you can use, I would say, about three to fill the entire table. A critical piece that I've learned later on is to prevent microplastics from going into our water source and making for a messy cleanup is to use this netting right here. It takes a little bit of extra effort, but if you take a rubber band and put it around the plastic unit and then fit it into the plug, it does prevent plastics um, going through the valve. The second part of setup is going to include the water source and how to get this equipment set up pumping wise. So first we've got this big huge tub full of water. The way that you fill this tub full of water is using these lovely contraptions. Usually you bring three of these filled to the event. There are two cords. The gray one is going to be going to our flow regulator. The other one is going to be pumping the water out through a tube up through the stream table. As for the nets, uh, please make sure that you put both nets um, across this. That way any microplastics that are coming through this table are going to be prevented from entering this water. And then last but not least is you have to make sure that this tub is actually underneath the spigot. Now we're entering the final stage of setup. Really the stream table is where it needs to be. The bucket has been set up, but how does it all work? One of the key components is its electrical source. This yellow portion right here is a surge protector and is extremely critical in making sure that water and electricity do not meet and we do not blow a circuit. As for the water being pumped through the unit, it's going to come from the tub and up through this hose. Uh, you can use these fancy shower curtains in order to help um, keep it to the side of the structure. And then last but not least, that water is eventually going to come up and go through a water dissipator. Before the students even arrive, you're going to want to saturate the table a little bit with water. So you use um, this knob right here. There's a low and a high, and you're going to turn it on until you see the green light. That'll again start the pump with water coming up through the hose and out later on you might have to go to a little bit of a higher volume to start. There are multiple ways to start this activity. One way that I like to do it is let the river flow for just a little bit and have those students make those observations. happening during this activity is as you're seeing the water um, run through the stream table, you can then have it be a more hands-on activity for the students. How we do that is by having this bucket um, of items that maybe has some trucks, some roads, houses, whatever it may be, and they can build their own little village. It's also nice to make it tangible as well, so one way that I found to do this is have the students pretend like the metal frame is a county, so maybe here in Vermont, Chittenden County, or over on the New York side, maybe Essex County. Then you can talk about the river that's flowing through it, so it might be the Winooski here in Vermont, or the Boquette River, and how they're all ending up in Lake Champlain, this puddle that's here at the bottom of the stream table. Eventually, you can ask the question of where does even Lake Champlain empty into, and hopefully one of the students says, the ocean, which is also true. So you could even imagine that the bucket at the very end is a larger body of water, such as the ocean. 
You can then prompt even further, once the water gets to the ocean, what happens to it? And again, start talking about the water cycle and how the water is even pumped back up through and it continues that water cycle. I give them about five to 10 minutes to build whatever they like. And then we talk a little bit more about different rain events that might impact their town. So during that five to 10 minutes of building, students might be focusing on their own personal properties. Maybe they're thinking about the school and the local downtown, where they're gonna get their food, their groceries. If they even want a lakefront property, things like that. Uh, you can have the water flowing during this time or they could potentially have no flow. Maybe it's a drought year. And then really what's gonna happen is you get to mess with um, how much water is coming into this county. Um, you can do low flow. I like to also, once we decide to have a high flooding event, you could even have the students do a large 10 second countdown, pretending that it maybe had rained substantially overnight and things like this. And you're having the students make all their observations. One way to do this as well is also with these coffee straws or coffee stirs. That way you can see how the river is changing and potentially what is being eroded along the way. As this activity continues, um, one way that you can start having discussions is either just ask prompting questions and see if the students lead the discussion that way. However, if you're uncomfortable with that and or it's not happening, you can use these lovely cards which talk about um, certain vocab words, such as a floodplain, an undercut bank, surface water, et cetera, and how the students label that within the stream table. I think this is also a great opportunity to jump in and talk about asking the students what they decided to focus on. Did they really want this big, beautiful house that they constructed themselves? Maybe then they could be an architect later on in life. Or if they focus more and they wanted trees and plants on their property, maybe a landscape architect. Once you've had the chance to do that and really discuss kind of what pros and cons of where they decided to build things, you can then actually almost do a restart, which obviously is not possible in the grand scheme of things, but it gives students an idea of best management practices as if they were designing a town, what would they do differently? Many times you're gonna be teaching this back to back, so one way for just a quick cleanup between groups is to have all the students help you pick up the items that they had and then place them back in the bin. No need to really wash them off because they're gonna get microplastics on them later on. However, as for the bigger cleanup, what's going to happen is again, you're going to have all the students remove all the pieces and make sure that everything is turned off and unplugged. Once you kind of let the water drain out of this activity, you're going to start removing the microplastics using this lovely scoop and putting them back into the red buckets um, that you've had before. Uh, I usually try to recommend starting at the top portion because mainly the water has all emptied out from there. Once that is done, you're going to start breaking down the activity. If you need um, some water flowage, you could even use this hose to then spray down um, once all the microplastics have been removed. Maybe even use a paper towel at the end. The biggest part of the cleanup is going to be what to do with the water in the tub. Although we don't necessarily want it to be this way, there is a tendency for microplastics to have gotten into that bigger tub. So you can use the flow regulator in this hose to potentially um, pump out any extra water that doesn't have any microplastics in. You can do it down a sink. You can either put it back into one of the big, huge tubs that you originally carried the water in, if it's not possible to empty it out into a sink and bring it back to the lab. And then at the very, very end, you're gonna have a little bit of microplastics at the bottom of the big, huge tub. Just do your best to scrape that out and then to put it back into the red bucket. So again, all microplastics are in one location. And from there, it's a two person team to load it back into the truck or vehicle that it came in uh, to really wrap up the activity.